Rainbow Dash, and the Double D Double Dare. It feels appropriate, right? Having the first three books be about Twilight, then Pinky, then Rainbow Dash. They're definitely the most popular characters, which feels appropriate considering they're each a different race of pony. Sorry to say, but Daring Dude does not make an appearance in this book. There's an element that ties into the third Daring Dude novel, but I'll get there once we go over the Daring Dude chronology. Order I play season in the timeline is season four, episode nine, then Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair, then, then season four, episode 10. No special reason other than this book and the following episode are both Rainbow Dash stories. All right, let's dash into this. <laughs> so Rainbow Dash is like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Why she like this, you ask? Well, because it's a midnight release of Daring Do and the Volcano of Destiny, the seventh Daring Do book. And can I just say, fucking awesome continuity. We were already privy to the first Daring Do story and the title of the second book, thanks to Read It and Sleep. Then in Daring Don't, we got a little more information into the plots of the third and fourth books. The fifth book was literally the plot of Daring Don't. Then we got mention of the sixth book in the first novel. And the real life Daring Do books released after this are canonically books eight through 10. I swear the continuity in this fifth fictional book series is better than the actual continuity of the show. Color me impressed, Miss Jim Barrow. So yeah, Rainbow Dash is feeling the hype. She's feeling it so much that she decides when the store opens, she's gonna, and I quote, swoop down like a kamikaze pilot. So the owner of the bookstore named Plot Twist, haha, is like, now I know you're all excited to get the book, but if you could just wait one more minute, what the fuck? <laughs> So the next day comes and Artie's ranting to Twy about the book and she's like, Have I mentioned how much I want to fuck Daring Do? Like, God, that girl is so hot, especially when she defeated the- La 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 spoilers! Wait, are you telling me the almighty book horse that is Twilight Sparkle couldn't finish the 72 page adventure novel overnight? Not couldn't, just didn't. You know, Rainbow Dash, some of us have priorities other than Wonderbolt training and jilling off to Daring Do. Well then what the fuck? Who am I supposed to talk about the book with? You know, there were like 200 ponies in line for the book. You could probably start a book club. I'd let you host it in the library. <gasps> Great idea. Thanks, Fluttershy. I... What? A few days pass and it's the book club night. Apparently all of Ponyville loves Double D's books because we got a good turnout of ponies here. In addition to the main six, there's Plot Twist, Lyra, Bon Bon, Berry Punch, and Wildfire. Fun fact, Wildfire is literally just a self-insert of the storyboard artist Sabrina Albregetti. Not, not that I'm judging. I mean, if I was on the art team, I'd totally make a self-insert that looked like me. Artie has this totally legit theory about the book that the Volcano of Destiny would become the hollowed hideout of the stalwart stallion of Naples. Without going into too much detail, the Volcano of Destiny is actually Mount Vahu and her theory is proven to be correct in the next book. She's really excited to share it with the rest of the book club, but currently everyone is bored out of their fucking minds thanks to Twilight's schedule. Wait, hold on. Lyra Heartstrings was slouching down in her chair with her hooves dangling in front of her. This book fucking acknowledged Lyra sitting like a human meme. Derpy was one thing, but this is a whole new level of fan pandering. Eat your Fucking hard out, M.A. Larson. Okay, so Artie's all like, So, what did you guys think of the book? Well, to be honest, I thought the action sequences were kind of unrealistic. <laughs> well, to be honest, I think you're full of shit. Because I personally met Daring Do in real life, girl. And despite her saying that she doesn't want any pony disclosing her identity as the author of her own stories, I can confirm that everything Daring Do does is physically possible. Oh, yeah? That bitch. So Rainbow Dash makes it her mission to take on as many daring do double dares as she can, and the rest of her day basically goes like this. Hi, I'm Rainbow Dash, and welcome to Jackass. Uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding, kinda. The most prominent thing that happens in the story is Rainbow Dash eating an extremely hot pepper from South America. Ugh, Jesus fucking Christ. Does this mean there's a North America? And if so, is Equestria within it? Equestria always seemed to be a parody of the United States since there are places like Philadelphia and New York, puns on Philadelphia and New York. But then there's also a place mentioned in the next book called Ney Mexicult. And if the word Ney implies new, does that mean there's a foreign sovereignty called Mexicult? We already have places like Saddle Arabia and Monocult, puns off Saudi Arabia and Monaco, which are separate nations in our world, but I don't think we ever got a direct answer as to whether or not they're their own nations. Also, South America is implied to be close to the San Palomino Desert, but the closest land to it on the map is Aramaspi's territory. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is- Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Fuck, okay, let's just move on. So the next day rolls around and Rainbow Dash feels like shit physically, but her confidence has never been higher. And she's like, Guys, I'm pretty sure I'm immortal. Girl, just cause you ate a habanero doesn't mean you're gonna live forever. Yeah, Dashy. I mean, Fluttershy overcomes her mental hurdles all the time, but you don't see her getting an ego. Please don't bring me into this. Ugh, whatever. You know, I'm really sick of you guys running rubbing your accomplishments in my face. Well, aren't you the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> oh, speaking of black, Zakora, are you all right? I'm afraid not. Our circumstances are dour. A token of mine was stolen, one with great power. Yo, what was yoink from you, Z-Dog? The half-gilded horseshoe, a mystical key. It unlocks the spirit circle and its treasury. 
If the loot is taken from within, the spirits will be free, and the haunting will begin. Don't worry, Zakara. With all of us together, we'll sure be able to- Later, fuckers! Okay, so obviously I omitted some stuff. Zakora instructs them that the spirit circle's entrance can only be found in the dual stronghold once every five seasons on the seventh day of the third week of the year, which is literally just the 21st day of the starting month of a season, so, you know, why be so complicated? Rainbow Dash still goes off on her own into the Everfree Forest, though, and naturally nearly gets herself killed on two different occasions. Once from giant alligators, and once from quicksand. The only reason she survives is because the rest of the main six are tailing her, making sure her rainbow ass doesn't become rainbow grass. Oh, speaking of rhyming, this next part is wild. So Rainbow Dash finds out that the dual stronghold is a fancy name for the now abandoned castle of the two sisters. So she goes there and finds that her friends have been kidnapped by this scary ass motherfucker. His name is Braze, and he's another zebra that rhymes. Now, if I can speculate here for a bit, I'm fairly certain Braze and Zakora don't know each other, but come from the same tribe. As described in the journal of the two sisters, the zebra population was downsized dramatically due to manticores hunting them. That tribe lived in the Everfree Forest, so I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that Braze and Zakora rhyme because they're still following in the old tradition. The only other zebras that I know of are the one that was mentioned briefly in the last book and heard happily from Pony Life, if that's even canon. I'll get back to y'all on that one. So Braze is like, You're too late, Rainbow Dash. The key shall now meet the lock. Now if you want to be useful, start by sucking my- Wait, is that a Glock? <laughs> and so the threat of Braze was vanquished from the land. Moral of the story, always carry a gun. I guess it's time. Time goes by Every pony has to go out on their own And maybe someday I'll have to try Something new that's just for me A little something I could be Just my own so I won't feel so 